Hey guys, it's Dan from Soil Leader. Welcome to the first One Take Wednesday. Today I am going to be going over how to set up your chem lights for your kit. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions on these. I did a uh, Instagram like story once uh, a while back when I was just getting some uh, some gear stuff put together for a kit, and uh, guys had a lot of questions on them. So I figured uh, today we would go over them. Uh, firstly, what is a chem light? Right. So uh, chem lights come. In, there's a bunch of different sizes. You got the little ones. Uh, that people put in, you know, it was like the old kids in Halloween, you put them in your mouth or you throw them in places. Uh, Blue Force Gear makes one that you can, uh, it's like a little tic tac holder that throws them out. That's one option. The other option is these, which are the four inch and then the six inch. Uh, so, what's the difference between a chem light and a glow stick, right? So, uh, glow sticks are for raves, chem lights are for raids. Uh, there is actually a company that makes a t shirt that's pretty cool with that. So basically uh, what we're going to do today is just start from the very beginning where I'm actually opening up the packages and getting them all out, prepping the chem lights, and then uh, the end product will be the ultimate thing you're going to put on your kit, so a little bundle of chem lights. To start it off, uh, first thing we're going to do is just open up the chem lights. Uh, again, not super flashy, nothing, nothing crazy about this, I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, get a good pair of scissors when you're doing this. Uh, like kitchen scissors work well or medical shears work well but right here I've got nine chem lights which uh, in each one they're uh, just a single single chem light in the package uh, they are packaged with uh, a little air inside of them to help protect them so that they don't get damaged when they're shipping them out uh, on the website I do carry the six inch ones mostly because those fit best in the, uh, the belt mount tourniquet holder so if that's something uh, you want to do, you know, feel free to use those. Uh, the difference between the four inch and the six inch is I actually find the six inch to be easier to snap off the bundle and pop on your leg. Uh, in the future, I'll do a video on that. That's kind of better off when I'm not sitting here in the basement in the, uh, in the shop working on stuff. So I can kind of show you in the future how to deploy those with just one motion. But essentially what you're gonna do when you pull them off the strand in a downward motion as you're pulling it off you're popping it on your thigh so all right let's see here I've got these almost complete there we are honestly I think the hardest part is taking them out of the package so here we go we've got nine chem lights uh, this is how they come you'll notice if it focuses on there they've got a little loop at the top as well as a little hole uh, what we're gonna be utilizing is the little hole on the top here uh, but moving forward here, so when, when do you use chem lights, right? Uh, each tactical team or team that you're on is going to have different SOPs or standing, standard operating procedures as to when they utilize chem lights, right? Uh, the most popular colors I would say that are probably used, at least in law enforcement, is gonna be your green, your red, uh, there's blue, and then we have an IR, infrared one we use as well. Uh, again, that one could only be seen on, under night vision. Uh, maybe some cameras too, like cell phone cameras, so be aware of that. Uh, but what do we use them for, right? So chem lights are going to be used for marking things. That, that's what they're used mostly, at least on my team, is for marking rooms, uh, whether it's clear or unclear. All right, I'm not going to dive too far into like specifics on that because it doesn't really matter. It's going to change based on what team you're on. Uh, they also can be used for signaling. So you can take, like, let's say, for example, a red one, crack it, put it on a piece of 550 cord or any sort of cordage, swing it around and like kind of lasso it and you can uh, you can do signaling there. Uh, it also can be used for kind of non-verbal non communication. So any type of uh, you know non-verbal communication where you need to crack one, throw someone, or throw it somewhere, uh, any sort of signaling or communication. Next uh, we have is identification, right? So let's say you don't have the money for a Manta strobe or a Hellstar uh, helmet IR illuminator right or let's say uh, maybe your team does but some patrol units are with you and they don't uh, so if you got a helicopter flying around wants to be able to see where guys are you can always crack an IR cam throw it on their lapel you can rubber band it on there tape it on there real quick um, as well as just a cheap marking if uh, if you want for your helmet so canine assets as well so a lot of different uses for just the chem lights because again they're cheap and disposable uh, so for the prep itself right now we've got nine of these the first thing we're gonna do is actually cut the tops off of these. Now, when I'm cutting the top off, the first thing I wanna do is cut that little loop off completely. I don't use that, it's just another snag hazard. 
And then what I'm actually doing, which I drew out because it's going to be difficult for you guys to see it on the camera, is I'm actually cutting away. Let's see if I hold that up there. I'm actually cutting away where that dotted line is, and I'm making this wall right here thinner between where that loop is and where the top is. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to make it easier to pull these off the rope, whether I'm using 550 cord or whether I'm using uh, this cable tie, which I'll show you in a little bit here. So I'm actually cutting down the top of it there so it's easier to see. Yeah, so it's not really focusing on there, but I showed you the illustration. I'm essentially cutting that down so when I go to rip these off my leg and off this lanyard, that it's easier to do. Because you'll find with a little bit of plastic, with all that plastic there, it's actually difficult to do. So just a few cuts, I just make it a little smaller and I'm doing that on each one, right? It doesn't take too long. Um, if you go back and replay this video, I'm sure this whole thing, if you're doing it without step-by-step, step, will probably take you under five minutes. So definitely something that's easy to do, uh, kind of brainless, and uh, you can do it when you're watching TV or just relax at the end of the night. Um, the other thing you could do is if you're on a detail where you have a lot of downtime, most guys will just play on their phone, pop bubbles. I try to utilize my time a little better so that I'm not having to do this on my own time. So again, I'm cutting off each and every one of those. You can kind of be quick with it. There you go. It takes me about two cuts each, and now each of these are cut down, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, next step is actually taping them up. So I've gotten questions on this. Now, you don't have to do this, right? So whether I'm using the six inch chem light, you can see I have a six inch one here with two inches of tape on the top and of the bottom. The reason behind that is if you're in low light conditions, right? This chem light is going to be super bright. Um, you're like, well, hey, that's kind of the point of it. It could be, right? So if you're signaling, that's definitely part of the reason you want it, right? I want it as bright as can be. And if I always want this as bright as I can be, I can always take off the tape, right? Because I have time to do so. But the reason I have the tape on here is because they're so bright in a low light uh, condition, it actually backlights you in the room. So depending on what you're doing, if you're in the hallway, if you're in a room, it could backlight you, especially under night vision. So uh, one of the guys I trained with, uh, recommended taping them up. So that's that's the why behind it. Again, you don't have to do that. Uh, so right here, I just have some like army green uh, duct tape. Bought this on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description for it. But it's just two inch duct tape that happens to be green. Uh, for these smaller chems, I'll do a one inch section on the top and one inch, one inch section on the bottom. For the six inch, I'll do the uh, a two inch top and bottom. So next, all I'm gonna do is start the duct tape. That's probably super loud for you guys, I apologize. I invested in a nice microphone, so at least you had some lighting and you had some microphone uh, so the audio sounded okay. But I'm gonna take this two inch piece of tape, grab it in the middle, and rip it off. So now I have basically one inch sections, all right? I'm gonna start at the top, and I'm gonna wrap it around till it covers the whole thing, and just cut it off, just like that. So again, this doesn't take too long. Right? I don't have to do all of them in the video here to, to show you, but or if you want, you can go step by step, follow along with me. Kind of doing chem, chem sticks by the numbers. But essentially, that's it. I'm doing one at the top, one at the bottom. You don't have to do that either, right? Like, if you want to just put the two inch at the top, you can. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm a little OCD about it. I like having it in the middle, but really, it does not matter, right? Uh, if you're spending a lot of time on this, you're not doing something else. So I understand that argument as well. But for the video here, I'll just do a couple of them so you can see, but that's it, right? It's pretty quick. I did three of them in what, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. So that's all you're doing right there. I would do that for all nine. Now, the reason I have nine uh, is no other reason than it just fits nice, makes a nice circle, especially on these uh, metal clips, which I'll show you in a second here. So that's uh, that's how I do that. Moving forward, you, uh, you wanna thread these chem lights through uh, either 550 cord, right? Or these little metal lanyards. Now, these little metal lanyards, again, I'll uh, send a link in the description, but essentially all they are is from Amazon, uh, 20 piece keychain cables. Unfortunately made in China, but they seem to work really well. They've held up uh, pretty good. And uh, I'm actually looking for something which I forgot to grab, but essentially for these, you just take this out. I'm gonna feed all nine of them through it. And again, it fits in the hole there perfectly. 
right? It's like almost like they're made for it. I probably wouldn't use these for my keys anyway, but there you go. So I have them on here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Once I have them on here, all this is is just it screws on to the end of it. So you can put this on here and you would screw it on just like this. And then what I forgot to grab, which is sitting over here somewhere. I'll be right back. There we go. That's why they're one take Wednesdays, right? So what I forgot to grab was something to crimp the end of it. So once I screw these all on, I would take the cutter right here. And if you have like a uh, electric tool there, you can use that as well. But essentially, I'm just going to use the cutter on this. And once I have those all the way screwed in, I'm putting it there and I'm just crimping the end of it. All right. What that does now is if for whatever reason that screw started to back out, it's not going to let those full pull away. And the reason I do that is because you are putting a decent amount of pressure on these when you go to pull them off. All right. So that's one option. If you don't want to buy these, which again, you don't have to, right? Because the other thing too is once you crimp that, it's kind of a one-time use. So again, they're not expensive. They're probably like, I don't know, I'll link it. They're probably like five bucks for 20 of them or something like that. So it's not, not a huge deal. Uh, but if you want a cheaper option, I'll show you that right now. So get yourself a piece of, I don't know, I'll say two feet of 550 cord, right? Uh, and then the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut it right all the inners right so you've got all the inners here right there I'm going to take all the inners out of the 550 cord all right the reason I'm doing that is if you keep the inners in the inside of this 550 cord keeps its shape right it's a nice circle on there the whole idea behind this is you want it to be able to cut through the plastic on the edge there right so I took my scissors and I cut all this off to making that top wall, this might be a better way of showing it, to make that top wall there thinner so it's easier to pull off, right? So I can do it without having to like really yank on it. Uh, the whole idea behind that is I want this to be able to cut through that plastic, right? So I'm reducing the surface area so it cuts through it a little better. Uh, next thing I would do is I would take a lighter and I would burn the edge of this and just kind of make it a little smaller. Like once it's melted, you just kind of go like that, get a little smaller and it's just gonna be easier to feed through the ends of these right so same thing I'm gonna sit there feed this through that way it doesn't fray get all nine of them on there right it'll look like this once I get to there I'm gonna tie several knots on the end so that it can't come off and then I'm going to tie a loop on the other side right so I've got a loop here that does not tighten up on itself all nine comes on the 550 cord and then a big knot at the end so it can't come free, all right? So it looks like that. The reason I have that loop there is this loop now will hook on to the HK clip I have hanging off my belt, all right? Uh, just to note on that, I like using HK clips for anything where I'm going to put a lot of downward pressure or a lot of pressure on. Uh, these little clips, there's a multiple reasons why I don't like these clips. There's these little like spring clips Right, bunch of, I see a bunch of people have these on their kit for whether it's hydration lines, uh, communication lines, so like your calm down leads, uh, or gloves. I don't like these because it's very easy to have something get caught in here, whereas the HK clip has a lot more tension on that, that locking bar there, so it's not actually getting caught in there. Uh, so I, I would recommend not putting any sort of carabiner or any sort of these clips on your kit because they're gonna get snagged on something at the worst time, especially when you're close uh, close to the guy in front of you, like the CQB or vehicle stuff. A seatbelt could get stuck in here, right? As you're coming out of the car, it gets hooked on there. Uh, someone else's sling, your sling, uh, the back of someone's kit if they don't have it all edged up. So I would not use these. Uh, as far as like those, those clips that go in between the belts, so like the inner belt and the outer belt, some guys have like those little clips that just kind of Velcro in between the two. I would really not recommend those for these chems either because when you're pulling these off, there's a lot of downward pressure. And if your belt's not super snug on those and you're pulling at an angle, that Velcro can shear off. So I wouldn't use those either Either for the chems. Those are better suited for your gloves, uh, you know, just admin, admin stuff, stuff that you're not actually putting a lot of uh, strength into. So once you have this, this is prepped, ready to go. Once you have all the chems on this, this is prepped, ready to go. Now for these, for the metal band, 
I still end up looping a piece of 550 cord on here. So I'll tie a piece of 550 cord around here, knot it up, and then again, create another loop, right? And the reason I do that is it creates space between where that HK clip goes underneath my belt and the cams, all right? So that's that. Lastly, when you have this, you're gonna wanna rubber band them, right? Uh, something to keep, especially breachers out there, but stuff to keep in your car, obviously you don't need a huge bag like this, but are just some uh, rubber bands. These are number 64 rubber bands, if that means anything to you. It doesn't to me, but they're essentially uh, just some heavier duty rubber bands. Uh, I keep them in your car. Just, in, just a, a side note here, right? So you get some haters that jump on the Soy Leader page and like, they start talking crap about the tourniquet holder. Like, well, I would just use rubber bands. I would just use rubber bands. So I'll show you the rubber bands that came off of these, which I made probably like six months ago. So here's a rubber band and it just keeps snapping, right? So rubber bands are great when they're fresh, right? But what ends up happening to them is they get dry rotted and they end up snapping, right? So yeah, if you're going on a mission, right? You're going on an op, you're a military dude or something and you replace your rubber bands every time, sure, right? Like you'll go through a bag of rubber bands a year, but if that's what you wanna do, that's fine. Uh, so the people hating on the Belmont turret holders, that's a reason why I use elastic, right? That's coated in fabric versus using just rubber bands. Um, so anyway, getting back on the task. We have our chem lights here, right? The reason I have them in a strand here is once you initially pull the first one, the rubber band's gonna either come off, stay stuck up here, right? Uh, or break off. And what you're left with is a bunch of these which are now easier to grab. So the first one's gonna be the hardest to grab and then the following ones are gonna be easier to grab. Because as you snap one off, even if it's not in the end, it's gonna slide down to the last one. So you're always, it's always kind of self-feeding towards the bottom. So I can just reach towards the bottom and they're all self-feeding. As one comes off, the other one replaces it. Uh, the reason why I like using nine of them seems to be a good number for creating a little circle. So I'm gonna make a little circle with these, kind of feeding them together, just like that. Take one of the rubber bands, wrap it, and I just do two wraps like this. I keep the rubber band kind of in the middle and that allows me to grab onto one from the bottom. You wanna give yourself a little bit of room to grab it, but that's it. So I would make, in uh, you know, watching an hour long episode of your favorite show, I would make like five of these, six of these, keep them in your kit bag and have them ready to go. Uh, for us, we mark rooms with these, so each cleared room gets one. So we go through them pretty quick. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it's nice to have some ready. So once you're done with that op, you can just throw another set on. Uh, then all my little partials, I'll end up with like, let's say I clear I clear two rooms, right? Smaller house, I clear two rooms, right? So now I've got seven of them on there, right? Uh, I will probably end up just using that for training, right? If I only have like three or four, I'll take that one off, throw it in the training side of my bag, and then I use the rest of those at training. So they're not being wasted, they're getting utilized in training. Uh, and then I always keep a fresh set on my kit for operational purposes. Uh, let me just go through here, make sure I got everything I wanted to tell you guys. Mission prep, yep, and that is it. So again, I will link the cables uh, in the description. I will link the tape in the description. Uh, as far as the four inch versus six inch, or three inch versus six inch, I guess they are, uh, the three inch ones are a little harder to snap on your leg, uh, but you can kind of, they take up less room so which, which is kind of cool. Um, and just right now, that's what my team's issuing me. So I have a bunch of these, where these I'd have to buy right now. But I hope this uh, One Take Wednesday helped you out. Again, feel free uh, to hit me up in the DMs if there's any other future uh, you know, discussion you would like me to go over as far as gear, gear prep, uh, anything like that. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.